everybody. We are just about ready to start the stream. This is my free stream check to make sure the audio is coming through appropriately enough. If it sounds wonky or weird, let me know now so I can fix it. We wouldn't want to embarrass ourselves now, would we? Otherwise, we are gonna go in just one moment. and gentlemen it is friday oh my gosh fantastic i know for a lot of americans out there you might be a little full and weary based on an incredibly large meal you had yesterday and if that's the case excellent that's fantastic for everyone who's not american happy friday excellent oh my goodness so wonderful um my name is eric schrader i'm the community ambassador for rockfish games and you're watching the official rockfish community stream. What does that mean? What does it entail? Well, let me tell you. It's a place where we can hang out, answer your questions very directly, very transparently, so you don't have to worry about any shady dealings going on through these awkwardly written blog posts. No, no, no. Nay, I say to thee, we have that direct line of communication for you right here, right now, folks. And of course, in that entire time space, you can bring your friends, your family members, you know, other people that you think might enjoy these things who have burning questions especially, so we can clarify any of those points that we've said in the past or anything that you might be looking forward to in the future as well. And then of course, in addition to that, we'll be playing the Everspace 2 closed beta in its current format so that you guys who haven't seen it at all can see a little bit of what that's about. And then we have developers in the chat. They're lurking, I know they are. They're, they're beautifully lurking in there and they will help answer anything that I happen to miss because the chat can move by a little bit fast from time to time. But no worries, we'll get you covered. Last but not least, we are, we do have a little bit of a focus for the stream. It's gonna be a little bit more combat oriented than usual. So last stream, we went to an area a bit under leveled and that's exactly where we're starting with this one. Uh, let, let me just show you straight up. Um, it's it's gonna get, it's gonna get, pretty challenging. Um, my equipment isn't really super great. Uh, the location challenge is literally to defeat all these enemies. Um, so just to give you so, some some reference, I'm at level seven. Uh, a lot of my weapons, they're all level fives, really? Oh my gosh, we have, we have like level fives across the board here. Uh, so yeah, and the location that we're in, you actually see it's a level nine location. There's a, a number right where the mouse cursor is in the very middle. That's the level location. And this, this is an important distinction on how we are progressing the campaign, uh, the overarching game experience, because it's not wherever you go, it's gonna like scale to the, about the same level that you're at. No, 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 no. You get to pick and choose if you want to go to a more aggressive and higher level location, or if you wanna go to a softer, lower level location but we still also wanna add value and meaning to those lower level locations as well. So as you are playing through the campaign, those lower level locations will also be leveling up behind you. That way, there's an impact for going back to those locations later, but in allowing yourself to like have that flexibility of freedom and the difficulty thereof of the game experience, you do have that choice on the fly. It's not a little toggle that says easy, easy mode, hard mode, you know, whatever. You just pick and choose, and that defines the combat challenges that you will face. As well as the rewards. High risk, high reward, low risk, low reward. You get the picture. Beautiful. So I also mentioned in the little Discord notification, I said we're going to be talking about a thing called the enemy caster. Um, you've actually seen me use this before in secret. I'm going to show you the dev controls. <gasps> oh my gosh. Uh, which I accidentally showed. Uh, whatever. Um, I'm gonna show you that and kind of how I mix and match that to help us internally play test the various enemy types, their AI patterns and the strategies thereof so that we can make sure that this game is getting properly designed, right? Uh, so we're gonna do that today. So lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of combat, okay? Lots of combat today. So um, 
Another big thing, one more thing before I dive into this, as you see that I am barely under leveled. Things could go south and I might have to reload. Just bear with me if that happens. Um, there's still a little bit more of a balancing act. I have to put out the obligatory work in progress. I hope many of you know this. Of course, we're still fine tuning a lot of these little features and details. It could be as little as a stat increase or decrease here and there, or it could be something as big as a complete ability change. All of this stuff uh, can vary wildly from now to early access. So, okay. Ooh, I think I think that's all the stuff out of the way, right? Checks and balances, we're good, right? Mm. Water is great. What happened to your green screen? Well, actually, my green screen has not been fixed yet. You can actually see it barely. I've tried to adjust it further, but see that little see that little blip, that dirty little rascal. Oh my gosh, I still have the old one. I I spent like way too long yesterday. No, not yesterday. Two days ago. I spent way too long two days ago trying to fix it for this last time because then I'm ripping this green screen down and I'm, I'm getting a new one to make sure that we don't have that little booger anymore. All right, excellent. Let's go destroy some stuff. Let's do it. We haven't had the exact same ship that we had last time. Look, all this level nine stuff. Where's that Weber drone? I remember him like it was yesterday. Okay, we have to make sure we do not engage him first. Um, also, let's take a quick look at our devices. Magnetic repulsor is going to come in handy, I think. EMP generator. Oh, we don't we don't have any other options. That's uh, we did not do our due diligence and go exploring. So we're just gonna have to use the tools that we have. Oh my gosh, here we go. Now, obviously through the course of the, um, through the combat, it's gonna be hard for me to answer live questions right then and there, but just know that um, I'll have these moments where I'll answer whatever I see. Okay, good, sniper's gone. Where's the, oh no. Where's the, is the Weber still away? Okay, good. He's. He's getting closer though, that's a problem. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hyper focus in on this Weber drone because we I really don't want him to, to do anything. Like at all. Just blow up to the mines, please. Thank goodness. Another there's two of them? Maybe that was my problem last time. Okay. Let's get some space. Our next target is this missile boy. Oh my gosh, we are already, we're already in the red. We are shields back or something. Oh goodness gravy. Ouch! Okay, okay. So you can get a very good sense of what we're dealing with straight out of the gate. And we're gonna try and navigate this uh, one more time in our current loadout. And then from that point, then we're gonna adjust things. We're gonna, we're gonna, give me a little bit better odds um, to, to swing it into our favor through the itemization. How about that? All right. Mad cap, we're gonna push sniper. We're gonna snipe the sniper. We're gonna attempt to snipe the sniper, and then we're just gonna get rid of it. Okay, good, good. Oh my gosh, these guys are so beefy in comparison. Now that should finish him off at least. So I'm using a, a couple of, oh no. We need to find that uh, drone ASAP. Both of them. Okay, good. Much better. Shields are up still, that's good. Shields are down now, that's not good. We'll continue using the tools that we have, though. I can I can be a bully to singling out guys, so this is going to be fine. Perfect. Uh, 
Thankfully, they're a bit more segmented here. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. So, fun thing about madcaps is that whenever they blow up, they launch, they scatter a bunch of mines behind them. And in the case of running into a wall like that, all the mines scatter right next to them. So I was very lucky in his poor maneuvering. You don't really get to see that too often, but when it does happen, I don't know, you're kind of thankful for it. <laughs> Wait, is the little text when you die changing and there are multiple hints how to avoid dying? Oh, I mean, that text could change for sure. But we'll have to see what happens. You should use the energized boost. I probably should. I think that would give me a greater... Um, actually, yeah, I, I think I will swap over to that. That's. I, I was hoping that the EMP generator would provide a little bit more flexibility of positioning, but I think that you're right, and actually that the energized boost... Um, I mean, when you're, when you're straight up looking at positioning as a whole, like, that is your be all end all right but uh unfortunately our engines they are they just they just aren't super great we don't have a lot of speed gain <coughs> excuse me but we will use this energized boost and we'll try and uh clear out this detonator drone be before it's too much of a problem too if i can hit it maybe now, I am using mouse and keyboard, which, ironically enough, is harder to get these shots because you don't have the auto-aim from a controller. So, would definitely encourage individuals to use a controller if this is your favorite weapon. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Is he behind that debris? He is. My goodness. I can ping him around. Yeah, that should take care of him. There's one more behind us. We do not want him sneaking up behind us, so we're going to address him first. Dividing and conquering. There we go. Now, the rest of this space, we've got more drones. We've got a handful more fighters. But our a big guy that we're going to have to take on is a destroyer on the other side of this playing field. That's gonna be, that's gonna be really hard for us to interact with. Now I was able to clip that outlaw flying by him. And so I actually threw him into the asteroid because I've augmented my energized boost with the tool that allows you to effectively ram your targets. And I've said it a lot, but it's it's really like one of my favorites. Um, favorite options that we've added to Everspace 2. Like you just you just didn't have ramming options in Everspace 1. They just they just didn't exist. And uh I'm really good at ramming as you just saw. So it just uh it makes me happy that now I can be rewarded for that. Ouch. Okay, I think we've got Yeah. We've got a viper on us, and that's going to be very dangerous. Ouch! Just as I was talking about it. Trying to take this guy out before he could do anything meaningful to us. Now, one more time, I want to put a lot of emphasis on this. We are just two levels under these enemies we're fighting. Just two. Just two. And uh, while we haven't figured out very specifically how many levels the player will have just yet, what I can say is that we want to make sure that there is a pretty stark difference between the levels, where if you're going into an area that is over-leveled, it's going to prove to be a challenge. And if you're going into an area where you are over-leveled, it's not. This Piper, oh my gosh. Ooh, we cannot get hit by that missile or we die. Ooh, that was actually way closer than I would have liked it to be. Please? Okay. A nano injector. Hello there, friend. Don't mind if I do. Woo. 
All right, so we've got one more big baddie to take on, and it is an outlaw destroyer. And uh, the irony is that normally these larger ships, they're not too bad, especially when they've been isolated from all of their allies. However, he's still two levels higher than me. There's still a large challenge to be had here, and he might even be on the cusp of leaving the area. So we might have to leave and come back for him to spawn back in the middle. That has since been rectified in a future rendition of the game, by the way. So if you if you happen to go out there and we can't actually reach him yet, don't worry about it. No problems. Then address. Yeah, he's quite a ways out there. But this gives us an opportunity to show you what it looks like whenever you reach the borders of the game. Yep, just like that. You spin around and it keeps you within a designated area that we've handcrafted. This is very intentionally designed so that you can explore these intentionally placed doodads, these polygons of sorts, in order to find the hidden secrets and nuances within the game space. Now, I'm gonna fly out of this location and then fly right back in, and it should move that outlaw unit back to where we need to take him on. This is just an aspect of, you know, a situation where we have already addressed it, as I mentioned. But we have to be able to combat him, so here we go. Where is he at? Aha! Somehow he has, he's evaded our radar. We can't even see his health pool. And he's gonna do a lot of damage to us with his shots. But thankfully, we have a high capacity rocket launcher that should be able to do some decent damage. These enemies also open up a weak point whenever you're battling them. Man, he's so beefy. I wish I could honestly see his health. That would be really nice. But they have a ton of health, and when they open up these sides, you might be able to see the numbers difference as we're firing inside there, that 400 you saw, because it becomes a weak point. Oh man. So healthy. I'm also going to swap out our magnetic repulsor, which simply cannot be used on larger vessels like this. But we can use our EMP blast, which will at least disable those turrets for a moment to give us some breathing room. Don't want to mine ourselves, that would be uh, embarrassing. Now you might also notice that we can do damage to those turrets, but unfortunately, whenever we're hitting those turrets, they can just go inside the ship and then repair themselves, and then we just have to fight them again. So that's why I'm not actively shooting at them. If we dealt enough damage in one go, we could actually take out the turrets. This guy's very healthy and still dishing out tremendous damage to us. Okay, his armor's down. Time to go in. Oh, our core is damaged? That's that's not good at all. Now, when I say our core is damaged, if we look at the very, very top, we have a little indicator, and it looks like a, um, a lightning bolt. That lightning bolt's telling us that our core is, is busted. That means that our regeneration values are going to have taken a hit, probably. Let's actually find out. Oh, our weapon output has been significantly decreased. So that's, uh, that sucks. Thankfully, we have three weapons on this ship so we can cycle between them. 
but yeah, ouch. That stinks. Okay, just quick break, quick stretch. I'm gonna see what the conversation's been all about. UI is clean and smexy, I like it. Well, hello there, Don. That's uh, very appreciated. But yeah, I mean, we're still we're still working on it, so if you like what you see now, just, just hold on to your butts. Oh my gosh. Magnetic Repulsor no longer works on larger targets? Correct. Yes, we wanted to have some semblance of of um, effective realism, if, if that... Just digest that sentence, okay? And, but we didn't feel like it made a lot of sense for a little fighter to take on a very large vessel and then literally just throw them spiraling out of control. Um, yes, it was kind of fun, but it leaned more on funny and uh, a too much immersion breaking for our cup of tea. So we decided to tone that back. We've made a couple of adjustments there. Um, there might still be ways to do it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But for now, no. No, it's, it's not a possibility. All right, I really, I really want this guy to explode. Hopefully by not having a health bar, it doesn't mean that... Oh, did he call in reinforcements? Oh boy. By not having a health bar, I hope that it means that I can still destroy him. Okay, yeah, now we now we got now we got his number twos. Oh, this is uh this is gonna be interesting. Let's try and eliminate him from combat. Scatter gun is really good, but you have to get really close. And again, this this guy is actually three levels higher than us. That scatter gun can almost obliterate him. All right, man. If only this railgun weren't a level ten. Unfortunate. Let's see what we can do with our ultimate here. Oh my gosh, we are taking so much damage. Woo! That is what we needed. We are immediately using this nano injector because Death is uh, imminent. <laughs> Woo! All right, and we are gonna take this super gel because we can use it at the very least for a perk. Where is that super gel needed? For Delia? Oh yeah, okay. So we're gonna use that super gel, exactly three. Oh my gosh, we can talk about that in just a second. Uh, don't think we're gonna need a broadcasting. We'll get rid of this booster though. All right. So yes, we completed the challenge in this area. Oh my gosh, that was, uh, that was pretty savage. Now we can go exploring. Woo! <laughs> so that feels good. I feel quite a bit better about that. Uh, but we do have uh, some major issues. We're completely out of secondary equipment. Uh, we have a damaged energy core, not good. It does hurt our weapons only. But still, like, weapons are a big part of a spaceship looter shooter. So, you know, take that as you will. We're finding a lot of credits, though. So hopefully uh, whenever we get back to a station, it's we're not going to have any problems in buying and selling. But yes. Otherwise, each one of these locations um, that you see here, like these little pips. I, ca I call it little pip in comparison to these big pips, right? So like this diamond is completely full versus this diamond, which is much smaller, right? These little pips are um, compacted spaces for you to have these varied unique missions that you complete within that area, uh, much like you saw here where we had to defeat all 16 of the outlaw units. And then we got a little reward for that. Every single small location provides some sort of benefit to go and complete. At the same time, much as I've been pursuing the quest line of this, you don't have to go to them at all. The big locations 
are going to be more plot specific, but also have a much deeper uh, level design process applied to them, which invokes more creative play styles, uh, a lot more hidden secrets, uh, nuances of that nature um, to give you far more reward for your explorative creation. And these sites can be planet side, much like Nefty's Plains and Charbis Bowl. Um, they can also be completely out in space, like Union Bridge here. This is actually a gateway location, which is why a line connects it and goes all the way over to Union, which we've been talking about a little bit. We've shown it off a little bit. And there's a lot of locations that you'll be going out and exploring and finding these very large locations, again, that are heavily explorable, and then these small pockets that provide you those unique challenges if you want to go out, do some more missions, complete objectives, etc., etc. So basically, I just said, large world. Yes. Very nice. Good. No secondaries and a lot of duct tape holding up the dash. Basically. I mean, we haven't uh, added the um, the damage internally yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, just just imagine a very cracked windshield and maybe like a busted component down here, like a button hanging out. I don't know. Just get creative with your imagination. We do want to make sure that your damage is reflected internally as well. Now, if you do look at the ship as we're doing like as i'm boosting the engines look at the lower right engine for example see how the light is awkwardly flickering versus the other ones we are applying certain meshes and design techniques to where when you are taking damage that the ship reflects that and it's not just from like a, a heat damage sort of thing with these meshes right we want to make sure that like look at that light that light is definitely having some issues. And it's reflected and it only does this if it's taken damage. So we're having a lot of fun. Oh man, that doesn't look good at all. We're having a lot of fun with, oh man, even that looks really torn up up there, goodness. We're having a lot of fun with representing how your ship looks even from a damage perspective. And this crosses over through all the different modules of the ships and you know, I, I always have to do it. You know, some people are like, well, what, what are you talking about with modules? Well, if we fly over here and we look at the ship, we can change around the modules like the body of the ship, for example, the wings of the ship, the engines. All of these are different pieces that make a whole. And you can also see that the damage mesh is different based on what body and the parts that make up that hole as well. So even the damage is like unique per module of the ship. And this is just one ship class. So like, you know, looking at this ship class alone, you can get a lot of variations and designs and stylistic damage, if you will. I like this one. We're going to keep this one. We're going to keep this one. Okay. So now we're going to go back to base to a base, rather. We're gonna heal up. And then we are going to show you a little dev command that we've implemented so that we can properly play test how enemy types are tested, if you will. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you in on our developer secrets, all right? And we're gonna be using this little thing right here. Oh my gosh, what is that? Yeah, that's right. Dev commands for days giving you a little slice of what it looks like. And I, I wanna be clear here, I'm not talking about all these things, cause spoilers, but we're going into one very specific thing. G Flamex says maybe get a different hyperspace travel song. Yeah, I mean, this is one, one system out of all the eight that we uh, are teasing, I suppose is the best way to describe it so we'll see surely we wouldn't reuse the same sound files for everything right oh yeah two little tulameo uh makes a very uh, uh, what should be obvious but you know what 
some people are completely new to this stream. I wanna make sure it's incredibly clear. So even if it isn't that obvious, let's just cover the grounds. When I push a magical button on my keyboard and I get these dev commands, that is because I'm a developer at Rockfish Games. Okay, this, this isn't, you, you can't just go into your beta build and be like, oh, there's some secret. I'm gonna extract all the data. I'm gonna find this. No, actually it doesn't. It's not, no, it's, it's another layer. Like it literally doesn't exist in the game. Just wanna make sure that you guys know that. Um, this is very specifically a dev version of the game that allows me to do that. So please don't waste your time. I, I just, you know, if you like poking around files, it's fine. Probably don't tell us that you do it, but you're gonna waste your time if that's what you're looking for. Okay, so we've ended up at a base. Let's talk a little bit about the base format and then we can uh, go through um, this um, enemy builder and uh, show you what that has in store for us when we test what the structure of enemies and combination look like. But first, we, we really gotta repair this hole. So we have a couple different ways of repair. As you know, our energy uh, core took damage and our armor is completely broken, as well as our hole taking a lot of damage. You can go in here and specifically say, well, I wanna repair you know, just my energy core uh, and maybe just a portion of my hole because maybe you're strapped for cash and you're not quite sure what you wanna do. You know, you can customize that. Or if you don't, if you don't care at all and you're just like, I wanna just repair my ship. That's right, we have voice commands. No, I'm just kidding. I pushed R at the very bottom. We have shortcuts, <laughs> just straight up do it. It's like, I don't care. Like I need to go in here and select all three of these. No, no, just quick restock, fill it all up, take my money. Just like shut up and take my money. It's That's what it is. It's a shut up and take my money button. Uh, quality of life improvements been made all around. Um, and we're still improving because obviously early access hasn't even dropped yet. So great. How big would the galaxy be in Everspace 2? I have been showing this off a little bit, but the plan is to address approximately eight different star systems that we call sectors. Um, and each one of these locations, just a very quick visit, quick peek at this. There's about 10 major locations and beyond that, maybe like 15 minor locations that you can go to. Those numbers start really adding up when you look at the grand scope of what we are uh, attempting to do. Now, please keep in mind that number can vary wildly. I'm talking, we could go, we could go like 80 major locations and uh, what would that be? 120 minor locations, right? Like that would be the equivalent of what we have in CETO and just copy paste it over, right? But again, like each one of these locations, it's unique. It has its own sort of personality. It has its own factions. It has its own this, that, and the other thing. And I have to be careful about what I say here because that could be whoops. And beyond that, um, then you also have to have unique challenges representing uh, themselves in that thematic representation. Woo. So we, there's gonna be a lot uh, just building it out from the get-go, right? So know that we really do wanna have, you know, somewhere around like a hundred locations to visit at the very least. Uh, but beyond that, it's, it's gonna get pretty crazy. And again, all of this is handcrafted, all of it. There are some minor examples pertaining to random locations that can generate as you're traveling as well as the end game systems that we are planning on incorporating. That will include a procedural uh, system for you to have effectively never ending runs. But otherwise, this known space, all of this is handcrafted. It's, it's large, okay? It's large and it's persistent. All right. So how big is it space-wise on the hard drive? Well, that's hard to say, because I mean, it's not done. Um, I mean, we're already in the tens digit of gigabytes, but that's also because we have a lot of stuff that's like lingering that we haven't implemented yet. That's, so that's, I could tell you it's a hundred gigabytes right now, but that doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything because there's, there's a lot of processes that go into that, that then uh, adjust and modify and, and consolidate the data so that it's optimized. So that when you're running it on your computer, it doesn't fizzle and explode right next to you. And then you have to call an ambulance, right? So. No ambulances, that's uh, that's our guarantee. No computers exploding. And if your computer does have a problem running the game, obviously we have the Everspace forums in which case to provide your feedback and we can come up with some solutions. 
and all that fun stuff. Oh, I also need to go shopping here. Hang on a second. We're not done. I want to see if I can... Well, actually, I don't really want to buy a new ship. I'm pretty happy with the one that we have. Um, but you can see there's also a striker-styled ship here. Um, two of them, in fact. There are three different types of ships in the current beta, and we will have more. Woo! We're going to have more on the early access. We've been uh, teasing the gunship, and uh, I'm happy to say that that ship is coming along nicely. Um, in our playtesting, it's uh, <laughs> still pretty broken. Like, there's a reason it's not in a live build right now, but it's definitely coming along, and we're, and we're excited to let you guys get your hands on that uh, in due time. And man, tell you what, January is not that far away now. Holy cow. So that's been a lot of fun to, to build out, to work on, and to prepare for you guys. Okay. From the shop, we need to sell a bunch of things because we're just not going to wait around for these upgrades. Uh, I'm not going to save this cargo unit either. Okay, so what can we get? We can upgrade our sensor. We'll take it. Buy and equip, please. There we go. We'll go ahead and take the... Uh, actually, we'll sell this. I'm going to be kind of doing some things a little quickly here, because I just want to... I really want to just, like, get up and go, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Actually, this will be... This will be a really good addition. We'll change it out. Here we go. That'll be that'll be good for now. Okay. And then just to ensure our stats look okay, our shield could definitely be improved. A sentinel would probably be best to beef up our shields because the sentinel have a more passive uh, shield bonuses applied to them, as opposed to the Interceptor, which is a more all-around. But yeah, this this will work for now. Let's also see what we can invest in. Oh, we need two more Vardom Crystal Shards for energy orbs to drop. We have enough iron here, so we're gonna invest all of this. We are looking for anti-grav modules. We have enough scrap metal as well. Look at all of this stuff that we found through this combat, which I'm thankful for since it was pretty beefy. And then we're also selecting a perk since we passed level five and I totally forgot to select this earlier. Whoopsies. We just chose air to the hole. Um, this is a passive benefit. Every time you get five levels, you can choose a passive of your choosing that's just applicable to you. Um, and this one means that killing an enemy has a 15% chance to repair you for 30% of their maximum pull. And again, these values are not finalized done, but we are, uh, you know, we're getting there. Okay. Now we're ready to launch. A lighter hole feels much better. second i'm noticing that i'm getting some really choppy frame rates so i'm going to try and correct that a little bit <clears throat> trying to see what my computer is up to naughty computer let's see if we can uh correct this you know know what i'm saying i think i found it yeah this should actually be a lot better I'm not gonna tell you what it was because I don't want to slander any other companies. Oops, all right. <laughs> Let's go to an unknown signal. And we're gonna see what's here. Now in one of these locations, uh, this has, if I understand it correctly, these are still handcrafted locations, but you're getting a mixture of opportunities here. So you might not necessarily see procedurally generated locations, but you do see generated spawn points for potential enemies that come into play. All right, 
right, man, when you fight somebody who's your same level, look at the difference here from what we are facing off against. We also did upgrade this, or upgrade, we got a new weapon, this Gatling gun, or auto cannon, as it's called. Much better. And now we have this space that we can freely explore. Now, sometimes these spaces can be just a bunch of asteroids and enemies trying to catch you. Uh, since it is an unknown signal, sometimes it can be a debris field. Sometimes it can be a base. Sometimes it can be other things. There's, there's a lot of things that can happen at these sites if you just take the time to explore and visit them. I'm a big fan of these ice cream cone looking structures. So we're gonna explore those. Maybe we can find some resources. Ooh. That was almost real bad. If he was active, I think we would have just gotten some major damage to our armor, but we didn't. And then once we clear these guys out, then we're going to show you um, the tool that we use to provide a combination of enemies and see what happens. The reason I call these ice cream cones is because like each one has like uh, like the the crunchy top, you know like when you have chopped nuts on top of your ice cream cone? That's what this reminds me of. <laughs> eh. Eh. But sometimes these contain uh, resource points, much like this. And as you are probably well aware of, resources are used in a variety of ways. Or rather, they will be. Uh, for now, a lot of it's just upgrading your perks. But we have been talking about a very specific crafting system and have dove into that just slightly. I don't have those dev commands in this version. However, um, we do want you to be able to refine the equipment that you are discovering um, throughout the game, right? So when you get five of the exact same thing, that can feel bad, right? Especially when it's not up to par with your standards. Say so you really want something that, that pierces shields. Like you have, you have all of this stuff that's like crazy damage to hole. It, it exponentially increases X, Y, and Z features and provides a corrosion effect and blah, blah, blah. But then you run across this enemy that's just like super hyper shields and you're just like, oh no. Well, you know, if you're looking for that right weapon and you're like, give it to me straight now, please. You just go into the crafting, um, utilize the, the materials that you've discovered and start building that out specifically. So you say, screw you RNG. I make my own rules and walk away from there. Oh, look, there's some debris. Let's explore this too. Maybe some uh, friendly material? No, nothing? Okay, that's fine. It's fine, game. That's completely fine. There are some sneakily hidden locations that can sometimes reward you if you navigate them. Um, our ship is too big for this. Pretty sure. Oh, never mind. We can clip through it, guys. It's fine. Don't worry about that. My point is that there will be spaces that are very small that maybe only some ships could fit into where others couldn't. Yeah, that can actually be a thing. But you know, those larger ships too might be able to just blast things open more than the little ones too. Eh, well, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. So let's answer some questions and then I'm gonna show you some tricks. You're getting some stuttering audio. Hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully the audio isn't choppy for anybody else. If, if it is, uh, please let me know and I can attempt to do like a refresh to make sure everything's good. Um, I do believe I isolated uh, the main issue on my computer. But 
But otherwise, uh, yeah. I want to make sure that we have a strong connection for you guys so your questions are getting answered, of course, and you're able to see the game in a, a fairly decent capacity, right? I don't know too much about a game, game dev, but what causes MP to blow, budged, and add years to the dev cycle? I want to understand why MP is such a big deal. That is such a long talking point. I have to simplify it here, Crimson. Um, but effectively, think of it like you're adding in a, an entirely second game to play alongside the first one. Because what multiplayer is doing is it's saying double the number of players. That's going to be a balance adjustment across the board for enemy types that you're encountering. It's going to be a balance across the board for equipment drops and how that's distributed. It's going to be a balance across the board between synergies between players. Um, if it's going to be a balance across the board if uh, you have persistent game worlds and people are interacting at different locations. It's going to be a balance of the campaign itself and how that's interacting. Like, do you have basically a, a, a Sonic and a Tails Prowler, or do you have two independent uh, actors? Um, there's there's a lot of questions that start bringing up, and if you do have two independent actors, then that's going to transform that even further, right? And if it is just like one person is following behind the other person, is that really the experience you want? Like, do you want to be somebody else's follower, or would you be okay with that? Um, and if that's the case, I mean, that's still adding in a, a number of features that have to be adjusted for a second player's interaction, right? It, you can't just drop it in and drop it out. And we haven't even started talking about networking, right? There's a big difference between if you're looking at like a couch co-op versus if you're looking at um, some pretty heavy duty connecting to somebody else. Like networking support gets, it's nuts. It's, it's really nuts. So yeah, just like even, even if we were looking at like based level structure of adding in a couch co-op second player, we still have to reevaluate every single system currently in the game, as well as all those that are coming to account for that. It's a big deal. And again, everything that I just said was the short answer. There is so much more to it. <laughs> There's so much more to it. And at the end of the day, like, do we think multiplayer would be cool? Sure, yeah, that's fine. But we want to make a single player experience that's a lot of freaking fun. Like that's what we, we want this to be your space, your story, your interactions, how you do things. That's what we wanted. And that's what we're making. And that's the way it's gonna be. But who knows what could be with like an Everspace 3, you know? I just, we could be hopeful there, you know? But let's let's finish Everspace 2 first before we get too crazy. <laughs> okay. What about a stealth ship? Oh, yes. Yes, that would be dope, wouldn't it? What's my favorite weapon? Um, it's not in this build. <laughs> oh dear, I've said too much. Oh my gosh. Let me just say that I'm really happy with the creative minds that we have here at Rockfish. Like we've We've definitely explored some unique options and um, things are coming together really well. And I'm excited for you to see more of what we are putting together. Otherwise, with the selection from the beta, I mean, I'm really partial to the thermo gun just because it's a really nice utility weapon. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but like it can really help you out in a pinch when your opponent has like this much health left. It's like, oh, it does more energy damage. I don't freaking care. I don't have to lock onto them. I can boost somewhere else and it shoots behind me to take them out. Like you even saw me in that engagement fighting uh, two level higher enemies ab uh, above me, right? And the thermal gun really came in a pinch to that. So I really do enjoy how the thermal gun functions as a whole. Now there are also, uh, none of these have unique modifiers on them, but there are some really fun, playful modifiers that can completely change my response um, with having some abilities to just <clears throat> bypass certain things and have certain effects. And I have to be really vague there, but rest assured, it's more than just a favorite weapon, I think. It's a combination of modifiers on weapons. That really makes me happy. And the ability to 
mix and match those on the various ship module parts um, to bring it together to have a really effective play style. You can have a Sentinel that's like incredibly shield beefy, for example, or you could have I'm, I'll just I'll just hint at it. You could have a gunship that is just massively overpowered with their weapons. So you could really fine tune those sort of aspects of each ship and outside of their classes or even within. Like maybe you built uh, a Sentinel. You could also make a Sentinel that's like hyper fast. It's very maneuverable. It acts like a scout type of a ship, but you can customize it with the right tools and abilities. I think it would be more optimal to take a scout and do that sort of things. But the point is, is that you can really find ways to tweak and modify uh, more towards your style based on the, the equipment you're finding. And also more importantly, the crafting that you utilize through that process as well. Okay, that's a, a few questions that we were able to answer. Okay, I wanna show you guys what this, it's called Open Battle Simulator, okay? So you're gonna see a lot of things on the screen. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, but don't worry about it too much. Basically what this allows us to do internally is we are able to test the structure of combat based on the types of foes that you are facing. So here you can see, and I also want to give a huge shout out to uh, Torben for this. He's been hard at work to bring this together um, so that our team can have the proper aspects to test and ensure that this is working accordingly. Um, and basically what it allows us to do is like say, I want to bring in like a couple of these drones, right? So we bring in four drones, we bring in like this, uh, these outlaws here, and then maybe we wanna bring in uh, a bomber. And that's wave one. We also wanna make sure that the, the level is level eight, and maybe there's like a three second wave delay. And next we can add a wave. So that's the first wave. Then we can say, all right, well now we want to face off against four outlaws. We want two madcaps and we want an elite outlaw bomber okay so we are building out these different waves to test and see these interactions then the next one we could say you know like we got 12 of these bad boys who are just going to start ch charging at us so now we have to make sure we have an option to explore area of effect damage right then we can add another wave and say that we want to have we want to create a leader uh, so we want this Minesweeper leader, and now we have followers. We're gonna have two elite fighters that are following it specifically around. And we'll confirm that leader, and then in addition to that, we'll have uh, two sniping bots. Uh, I just, I don't, I'm not gonna add any Weber drones, dang it. It's not gonna happen. But you can see that we are mixing and matching, we're choosing things to bring this all together. Uh, we'll add a, a number of other drones as well so that you don't know which drone is where. And then we will um, drop in a couple madcaps, a couple standard fighters flying on their own. We'll call that good. So now we can start this wave. Whoop, close please. Okay. And now we are dealing with level eights uh, in these various waves to test our equipment setups, to ensure that the units are working properly and to also get a good feel for how these engagements are operating um, and the game experience. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be real cheeky and just deconstruct them like this. And now we're gonna start our battle having ripped away some of those drones. Oh, thermogun's out of energy. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Marksman Executioner. That could be a very good tool to swap into. Try and take out this anti missile drone. Ouch! There we go. Woo! Shields are down. Armor's get taken some hits. But now that his anti-missile drones are down, we just wanna, ooh, that dodge though. We do wanna try and get the rest of his shields off so that our missiles can hit him the hardest since they are kinetic weapons. And kinetic weapons are absorbed by shields. Energy damage deals a lot of damage to shields. 
and kinetic damage deals a lot of damage to armor. As you can see here, we just fired off a barrage of missiles and we've stripped his armor away. Just like that. And the standard hull of a ship takes the full bulk of damage from both energy and kinetic. What a relief. So after wave one, wave two starts coming in here. And now we can see uh, the attrition effects based on the battle. Um, if we've taken a lot of damage, if we need to heal, if you know we have timed devices, stuff like that. This gives us a lot of flexibility to see uh, the configuration of how all of this combat effectively works within Everspace 2's environments. Now, I also need to point out that there's been some balance adjustments, of course, from what you see here versus what we are currently utilizing. So this might not be the best representation of showing you like how these enemies work in tandem with one another, but still, I thought it would be fun to, to kind of get a sight of like what we do internally, like aside from, you know, also flying around the locations and make sure that they're working appropriately too. But we know that there needs to be uh, some semblance of uh, challenge in the game world. There has to be some semblance of experience to overcome said challenges. We don't want everything to just be like, oh, it's a combination of this four units that's going to do this really boring thing. And now it's going to be these four other units with those four units and they're doing the exact same thing, which is really boring. Like we, we want to have that mixed interaction and that's what this tool allows us to do for you. Gets a, it's, it gets a lot of fun. Gets a lot of fun. <laughs> Goodness. Could you show other types of guns in action? I would have to go find them. I could, I could, I could probably find them pretty quick. So we'll see what drops from these enemies. Uh, maybe we can get some more options. But yeah, I think there's currently eight different primary weapons in this version of the game, if I'm not mistaken. All right, let's make sure that everybody's getting their questions answered and then we'll keep diving into these waves. So this could be, uh, this could be fun. Oh, I see, <laughs> I missed some comments uh, back in the chat. Spoot and I talking about, that's the scout bias talking? Yeah, probably. I know that you were here for that stream when I was trying to leave the uh, derelict station and uh, my wings got in the way. <laughs> This will be nice to see from a third party reference. It's hard to notice enemy teamwork when I'm busy trying to not die. Yeah, and that's that's actually something we want to test is to make sure that the different enemy types, they have enough versatility to where it's providing unique challenges as they're being combined together, right? Um, so I'm I'm glad that you uh, you see it from that perspective and, and see it for a reference point. <laughs> Let's never speak of that event again. Yeah, oh gosh, it's fine. Everybody has driving mistakes, you know, it's it's fine. Driving? Flying. It's kind of the same thing, yeah. Let's see. Any more discussion? Okay, so Michael did make some pretty big drops um, talking about multiplayer. And uh, I don't want to... We're not going to beat a dead horse here, but I do want to read these aloud just so that everybody is in the know. Okay, so wherever you're watching from, especially if this is cataloged um, on YouTube, um, if there's conversations from Twitch, I want to make sure YouTube knows. From YouTube, I want to make Twitch knows. Perfect. So Michael says, uh, to manage expectations about having multiplayer in the future titles, chances are really low, even if we had the budget. Um, the business case is not too appealing because A, community demand is not that high, and B, fast-paced 3D multiplayer combat is an order of magnitude more complicated than even the most ambitious AAA FPS you can think of, so the commercial risk would be incredibly high. Um, so yeah, it's, there you go. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time, Michael, CEO of Rockfish Games, to have your presence in these streams, to be able to give us that really big management perspective of what we have to pick and choose. I mean, we, we make so many hard calls in game dev, and it, and it sucks sometimes, like it, sincerely. Like sometimes, like it's hard to look at a feature of our product that we would really like to see shine in the best way possible and have to say, we have to cut this. 
and we have to cut it not because we're being selfish, not because we're being greedy, not because of any other reason, but because we're looking out for you guys. We're wanting to ensure that the product fits the bill the best. That's ultimately what we have to go through. It's hard, it's challenging, it's stressful. Oh my gosh. But uh, we are doing all of this with you guys at the forefront of our design. We have a vision. We've seen a lot of your ideas already through beta. We are looking forward to early access to where you guys just like destroy the forums. Just, I wanna see it explode. It's gonna be great. So yeah, it's just, it's nuts. It's nuts. Oh my gosh, speaking of nuts. Wait two. Oh, weapon overdrive? <laughs> we'll save that for a later wave, I think. I really do wish I had a pulse laser right about now. Wait, wait what is this? Mine launcher. I got really excited for nothing. Ouch! Okay. Little bit of space, please. Yeah, we might not actually make it through all four of these waves. I'm getting uh, quite eaten alive, actually. Unless I can pull some very evasive maneuvers. We are also going to go after this guy and see if we can... Uh... Didn't mean to actually clip him, but we want to try and get him over to that asteroid. Because so if I can get him into that space and maybe push him into it. Wow, we are we are really cruising for a bruising here. Whose idea was it to make an elite bomber? <laughs> Whoops! Yeah, those guys are devastating. Those missiles, they just keep pounding you from afar. And uh, as you can see, their interaction with a group of fighters... Oh, we are totally dead. If we survive this... Ooh, almost dodged it. But I, just, I mean, you can immediately see, like, these the varying interactions already are starting to come together. Like, you have a bomber who's basically floating away from you, like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go in. I'm gonna keep my anti-missile drones, and I'm gonna make it a complete pain in the butt to go after me, while all of my fighters are swarming around you, causing just sheer chaos. And I can assure you that bombers are not the only one with a unique set of principles designed in this way. So we're really happy with how all the units are coming together, bringing their own flavor and also their own strategies into the mix, where when you come across them all at once, you're gonna have to make some pretty hefty decisions and some sacrifices made. I uh, should, I don't, I don't think I need to say this, but also know that basically this battle simulator that we've been using has mostly been on Outlaws for the sake of the closed beta. That doesn't mean we're done with enemies at all. In fact, we've even shown another Outlaw unit that you haven't seen yet. A very large Outlaw unit. All right. Assuming you can continue and go to where you died to get your resources back. Uh, I'm guessing there was a second part to that question. Maybe. Um, but okay, so let's let's talk about the nature of the looter shooter as a whole, right? So um, obviously, when you go, whoops, when you go here, there's a save button, right? And then it gives you this message. It's like, it's it's kind of rude. You're like, oh, I want to save my game right in this moment. I want to keep all my stuff. And it's like you can only manually save, create save games while docked to a station. The game is automatically saved every time you enter a location or dock to the station. What? So I can't save right in the middle of battle, right before I explode so that I can save scum and exploit the system? No, nope, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, I wanna be clear here, like we have had discussions internally about because it is a looter shooter, you could have like a legendary drop, right? It pops up, it's there, you're like, Oh my gosh, the legendary, you pick it up, and right after you pick it up, you die. And you reload from that checkpoint, 
and that legendary item did not generate. Ouch! That sucks. That feels like the game is yoinking that opportunity away, right? That's what it feels like. And we are doing what we can to provide an experience that it creates these checkpoint systems, right? So that you can basically fly around, do your thing. It saves periodically. If you die, you do have to start back, but maybe in some degree or capacity because video game and not because any sort of, you know, real life making sense because you're not creating a new clone body here from a lore driven perspective. These are, this is the same person. Maybe there's a way that we can take some really high find or rare find and still keep that within the safe state. It's a discussion point, okay? We acknowledge it. Know that we acknowledge that. It's something that we want to make sure that we aren't uh, hurting the experience by taking that away from you, right? What if I die before I pick it up? We can't save every single system. We can't save every single scenario that can happen. And I mean, this is this is true of, of any video game, right? Um, there's going to be things that do slip through the cracks and that we have to figure out what's the best case scenario and we have to go with that. So it's possible that we could find a way to save that, but at this point in time, no, there isn't. So you have to, you have to get the goods. You gotta get the goods. All right. There's also a lot of value in fleeing. I'll say that too. <laughs> Some people say it's a retreat. No, no, no. Or no, people say it's giving up. No, it's not giving up. It's a tactical retreat. That is the proper application. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, and make a more balanced group of enemies for us. So we're gonna go back in here. Uh, again, Torben, thank you so much for creating this tool for us to show on the stream. And uh, let's make things just a little bit more uh, suitable for everyone's taste here, I think. Especially so that I don't just instantly die. That's that's never really too pleasing. Um, okay, so we're going to add another wave. Let's see. We'll, uh, we'll create a leader in the second one. So you can kind of see how this looks. We'll create a elite fighter followed by two standard madcaps. Okay, that's good. Then we'll have uh, two other standard fighters. Then we'll add another wave where we have, we'll have four sniper drones and then 12 detonator drones. Oh gosh, what am I doing with my life? And then finally we'll create a lead mine layer followed by two standard fighters. And then we'll have four elite fighters. That should be, that shouldn't be too bad. That should be good. We'll do that. Breezy says, wouldn't that be exploitable if you could find a farm spot and continuously reload and save until a legendary spawns? Uh, absolutely. Which is why we are being very delicate in the approach to the save files. and. Um, why I'm having the conversation at all, right? Because we want to make sure that as a looter shooter, you're being rewarded for what you're finding, especially based on a randomized basis, right? We don't want to yoink things away at the same time. We don't want to make it exploitable, which is why we do have to like hard stop at certain things and say, this is why you could lose something if, right? So there's not like one be all end all system that is applicable, unfortunately, because save scum are going to save scum and, um, you know, immersion player gonna immersion and there's not gonna be a, a fix in between there. Uh, we just have to do our best to provide a gaming experience that is pleasant and uh, that's what we are accomplishing. All right, so let's take on these uh, primarily drones because I wanted to just do this. Gotcha. Oh my goodness, we're on the edge. Well, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to bring these guys back to us then. Follow me! To the ice cream cones. My goodness, let me tell you what, I am so appreciative of lateral movement, lateral thrusters. It definitely makes me a happy person. 
still coming at me, right? Okay, good. Alright. One more, I'll do him. Alright, perfect. What'd you drop? Credits! I'll take them. Alright. We'll keep cruising down with these ice cream cones and we'll keep setting this up and we'll move into more waves of enemies enemy types. And hopefully, with a little bit of uh, persistence, we'll get some new weapons and I'll show you a little bit of what those look like as well for anyone who hasn't seen them yet. We're taking some damage. What a noob. Got you so much practice bravely running away in Everspace 1. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's funny because Everspace, the original Everspace, which is on sale right now, by the way, 80% um, off. Um, and the DLC is 50% off, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? For the Steam on sale? Oh yeah, Nightbot's actually telling me. That's straight up what's doing. Thank you, Nightbot. You're welcome. Anyway. Um, but yeah, in the original Everspace, running away is... You have to, like, it's so hard to know when it's best to stay and when it's best to leave. Because it depends, there's so many factors that it depends on, right, Mr. Joxer? Like, you understand me. I know you do. Because you've been there. Like, sometimes, you are, it's like one shot from death, and your best solution, your best solution is literally to stay and wait. And other times, it's like you're completely maxed out, you've got the stuff to crush any opponent, any type of opposition, but your best solution is to keep going. It, it just, there's so many factors there. Okay, wave two. Hang on, I'm gonna make sure that I'm understanding uh, another question here. Um, so Aurora asks, will we be able to encounter other clones like in the end game of Everspace's one campaign? Spoilers, dog. Jeez, goodness gravy. Oh my gosh, that's fine. Um, I mean, if, if guys haven't, if you guys haven't seen the story of Everspace one now, I mean, do note that I will be obviously saying a couple spoilers there since we're talking about Everspace two. I mean, come on, uh, Everspace one's been out for a while. If you do want to experience that story, I do encourage you to do so because again, it's 80% off. Holy freaking crap. Um, but yeah, I mean, you did encounter other clones. Could that possibly happen in Everspace 2? I mean, from a lore-driven standpoint, I think that's very possible. Um, I guess we'll have to see because a lot could have happened from the events of Everspace 1 to Everspace 2. We already know, like for example, you uh, don't have a Hive unit, for example. Uh, and a lot of people are like, well, what happened to Hive? Well, I don't know. I don't have a clue. And so I mean, you have to you have to keep in mind, like as we're building out Everspace 2, we are very passionate about our lore and bringing it all together. We don't want to, uh, we, want, we don't want to break that immersion factor by like completely changing the way that a character you've grown to know and love now suddenly acts entirely different and it's kind of heartbreaking to you. We would hate to do something like that. So there's a lot of purpose in the design choices that we make and bringing it all together. And we'll continue to do so. It should be good, it should be nice. Pleasant. that detonator drone. Did I, did I create that? Was that guy in the area? No, I think I created him. Can you switch to cockpit view? Absolutely. Now okay, let's do this for a while. I, I haven't been playing in cockpit view. Now, cockpit view, um, the mileage may vary depending on where your cockpit is situated on your ship. Like, literally. Because your vantage point, um, like if you're, I think our current cockpit is actually on the top, if I'm not mistaken, right? No, it's it's kind of, well, no, it's on the top. Um, 
So like if we change the cockpit's location here, I'm, I'm gonna try and uh, take out this spider first and then we'll show you how this can actually change. Even in the exact same ship type. Well, this elite has activated bonus armor as an ability. He's not just meteor, he actually has tools that define him as an elite. Okay, that's gonna make this a lot easier to show. So, if I change the location of the, uh... oh, that's the wings, whoops. We change the location of the, uh, the cockpit here. Oh, come on. Come on now. Here. Let me just pause really quick. We change the location of the cockpit, which is really hard to see in the sun, but like say we, uh, we put it down here, right? In comparison to the previous, right? Like we're moving all the way down. Like this can actually change how we perceive where our weapons are shooting from. And also a little bit more of like, honestly, there's not too much of a difference here and that's good, but like it can, it can make those adjustments, especially depending on what type of wings you have. Maybe that should be what I changed. But they are subtle adjustments. And we find them to be important. We, we, uh, we notice that they are ways to have a distinct style to your ship, the way that you're playing. So we are keeping that, those elements in mind as well. This mad cap getting real close to me. All right, there we go. So if we change the wings, actually, we'll uh, we'll go to where they are. Where's the wings? Oh no, this is the this is the interceptor. I'm thinking I'm thinking of a different ship. My bad. Oh my gosh, the. <laughs> The detonator drones and the, oh gosh, this is, we were getting sniped and we have to go in. Oh, look at this. Look at this terrifying assortment of just death and destruction. This actually reminds me of the trailer that uh, Tula Tula Mayo had made for us where the outlaws, these sniper drones here, are zooming in on their target. Look at that. And they're protected by all these mines. Oh my gosh. If I got hit by all four of these guys at the same time, we'd be in trouble. And look at that, they're aiming like straight for the cockpit too. Like, geez. <laughs> Yikes. Is the enemy AI able to fly backwards? In this current iteration, I don't believe so. But let me tell you what, don't think that very evasive foes or unique types of foes would have that as a as an option. I am really glad they missed because I missed my button press. I deserved that. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm gonna ram into a bunch of explosive drones. What could possibly go wrong? I'd just like to report that your streamer tonight is, is kind of dumb. <laughs> so this is another point actually to consider in how the enemy AI can operate and the different types can prove to be your downfall. If you do have a particular playstyle, including ramming, like I do, and then you have a mixture of something like a freaking detonator drone, it can completely change the end result. So uh, yeah, just like this is why we have like all these combinations of enemies to test and ensure they're working properly. Um, isn't this fun? I think it's great. Death is fantastic. All right, let's um, let's actually load back from this checkpoint. And, um, oh, do you guys want to see me do some more generation of enemies or do you want me to go take on some jobs, talk about other aspects of the game? Cause we've been doing a lot of combat today. I know we have, I know that some of you also would still like to see more weapons and I kinda wanna see if I can get to that as well. We are a little over halfway of the stream. So I kinda want your feedback. What would you like to see? What would you like me to, oh my gosh, a weapon drone? 
That's fast track to death right there. Good baby. Hey, a coil gun. Hey, it's not a bad coil gun. Let's show you the coil gun. A nice chunky boy. Not very accurate unless you're up close, but it deals uh, pretty equal damage both from an energy perspective and from a kinetic perspective. So they're pretty good. Pretty good choice, I would say. Oh, and then you can also uh, be super cheeky and do stuff with mines. Like grab your opponent's mine and then uh, toss it like that to gain control over it. Now I threw it very poorly, but you get the idea. I was a little out of position to do that most effectively. Let's try getting different weapons, okay. Let's do that. I can't really show too much of the procedurally generated like environment content. Um, but like if you're referring to like how different jobs can be populated. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's some variety. There's a little bit of variety here, um, what we have to offer. Uh, but again, also note that the beta, we are not done with all the jobs. Uh, and it's, we're certainly not done with the factions, so. XP goes towards um, a number of things, uh, but I would say primarily it is your means to diversify your ship in a easily accessible manner. So let's break apart what that means very quickly. Basically, we don't want you to start the game with 50,000 abilities. The progression system allows you allows us to introduce new systems over time. And as you grow, you discover these new systems, you upgrade these new systems, you better yourself. And you can focus in on certain aspects as you're growing through this progression. Um, as opposed to, again, like starting from the very beginning and have 50,000 options and scratching your head going, well, this is overwhelming. Right? We would prefer that you the, the game is accessible so that you can just dive in and play it as opposed to doing like 20 hours of research and then going, okay, I'm gonna buy this specific weapon and that specific module and this specific other thing and do this very specific thing so that I can maximize for profit GG easy. You know, like we, we don't, we would prefer not to do that. There will be, you know, a lot of variety of play here that's effective. We would prefer not to make anything too overpowered in one direction, right? So that's that's ultimately why we're creating the leveling progression system, to build over time. In addition, and we did talk about this um, already, but I'll just point out one more time, each of the locations does have certain levels associated with it. So it's another aspect of defining the difficulty of the game as you are playing, okay? It's not a new concept, so don't think that like I invented this or anything. Like it's it's basically allowing you to choose. Today, I want to face off against some really dangerous foes, but also get some really cool rewards. Or I want to take it casual. I, I'm not going to be in a rush. Let's go back to this one site and explore a little bit more. Take on some easier foes. Like that decision is up to you and how you're breaking in to this world that we are creating for you. And we can't do that if there isn't some kind of power level ranking system uh, in order for you to like know this is more dangerous than that, uh, aside from just like generically beefing up enemies. And that's not what our leveling system is about. Yes, that does happen. There, are, There is a statistical difference between a level six fighter and a level eight fighter, but there's also other subtle nuances that a higher leveled enemy is going to have that a lower level enemy simply doesn't. As I mentioned, one of the main core reasons of the leveling system is so that you are introduced to new mechanics over time, right? So you are growing in power, not just by from a statistical standpoint, but through options, through utilities, through powers. The same application to your opponents, but not as diverse probably. <laughs> New game plus, Ooh, that's all, that's, all, that's an entirely new can of worms. New game plus could be really neat where you like start off with everything. Like I, I get you, I feel you. We'll have to see what time allows and what um, the creative minds at Rockfish 
do declare. But I mean, I would, I would say as a whole, like, more game modes is always fun and great, right? We'll just have to see what we can do. There's still a lot of content we're adding to this game. Because a new game plus is only as good as the content you experience. So we have to put in content to experience. <laughs> what about unknown dangers? Oh yeah, I mean, there's, we go to unknown signals all the time. Um, jobs can have uh, unique enemies that show up out of nowhere. Uh, there are still a lot of things that we haven't shown on any of the streams that can um, change the nature of the experience you're facing. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be more discussion points about that, uh, VR 160, but yeah, I mean, for sure, we want to make sure that there are, there's variety and like the direction of how you're approaching different experiences. Okay. So we are going to search and destroy because we always like blowing stuff up. It's always pleasant. Uh, let's see, 10 copper. What do we have on our, in our inventory right now? We have nine iron. this AI controllers we don't really have a lot of anything so we can't really do any of the um, acquisition of goods but lost cargo there's there's a chance that this could be really good and there's also a chance that it could be kind of sucky but we're gonna we're gonna take our chances we're, we'll take a couple lost cargos maybe we'll get one that's good or we'll take we'll take three of them lost cargos are probably the most diverse mission well that's that's hard to say um, but as I mentioned before, like each of these job types, it's not like it's just a clear cut. This is exactly what you're going to do. Sometimes that can also create, uh, varied completion rules, if you will. So for example, the search and destroy, that's fairly straightforward, right? Go to location, destroy some punks, right? Right? What could possibly change in an event like that? Hmm? But then you have stuff like Lost Cargo, where it's like, okay, well, we need you to go look in this environment to discover where this item that we lost is, and then we need you to take it to another location. Well, that can also spawn a variety of different uh, complicated rules when you go. Maybe there's no enemies there at all, but it's very dangerous. Like it's a, a I don't know, some sort of corrosive environment because there's these critters all over the place. Or maybe it's a, an outlaw, home base of their own and they've actually found the item that you need so now you have to take on a base and take the item back or maybe it's you know maybe you get there and gmb's already there and they're trying to extract it and they get ticked off with you because they're like we don't need some punk in a fancy ship to do this for us and then they start attacking you and now you have to figure out if you're going to attack them or let them complete the mission maybe that's an effect on your reputation with them you know like there's there's a lot of different twists and turns that can happen based on the rules of even just something as simple as picking up some cargo and as i mentioned before there's going to be a lot more jobs than what you see here like this is just this is kind of like a generic pool of stuff we wanted to provide for the beta when that launched a couple months back so it's just getting larger getting better getting crazy so let's um let's complete some of these jobs We also have a tracking indicator so that like, um, you probably noticed I would pop into the map and then I would like, say I wanted to go to this site, I would double click it and highlight it. When you highlight something, it makes it surrounded by orange and it always populates. Otherwise, the only things that you see out in Superlight, we actually, we've never talked about this before, but the only things that you see in Superlight are somewhat nearby or are highlighted by a mission marker. So if we don't want that to be highlighted, if I double click this, it vanishes. It's not even present until we get within uh, a certain range. So if I boost over here, maybe now the game is trolling. Oh no, it's a, it's, it's a much longer distance than I thought. Um, but like, as you travel through space, you're gonna see more of these markers populate and then you can choose to go there. See right there, undiscovered site right there that's this site right here like we've seen it on our map but it's not going to populate since you know but then we have like this gmb defense search and destroy mission right here it says we have it tracked 
So we could untrack that, track something else, you know, whatever. Just some quality of life things to help you see where you're going and what you're wanting to accomplish and make it easier for you. Chris, oh my gosh. Well, we, we appreciate your excitement for sure. Um, we're getting there. Early access in January, I think is gonna be a very exciting time because guys, I, I, I legitimately cannot express how excited I'm getting <laughs> for early access because it's been, it's been so much more than just looking forward to your feedback. Like I get, I get just, I get tingles. That's, that's how I describe it to my coworkers. I get tingles when I enter into this content that we are generating. Like it's really coming together. And I just, I can't wait for you guys to see the next chapter that we have in store. There's some really rich stuff that's coming your way to early access. And we've been able to build just a little bit more because we've, you know, navigated our development cycle. So it's like a win-win. It really is. I'm just, it's, I'm pumped. Clearly, clearly I'm excited about this. Like I just, I just can't wait to show you guys and, and like share it with you. Oh my God. So, so that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be that's gonna be a really exciting time. It's been on your wish list for far too long. I mean, we've been in development for a long time, and we still have a lot more to go. And it just keeps getting better, guys. Oh, just keeps getting better. All right. That sounds kind of weird, though. It's like I'm talking about you know our, our own products. Like it keeps getting better. It's, I'm not trying to say that in a cocky fashion. Like I just, I'm legitimately excited about the stuff that we're doing. Like truly, truly. Uh, it's hard to express that. Hopefully that's not coming across in a weird way. All right, this search and destroy mission was easy. Give me that reward. It's settled. Okay, good. So you'll see that it said claim rewards up there. Um, I believe when we completed this particular mission. Yes, so with GMB Defense, we passed this pip. So what we're on now is the reputation tracker of the game. Um, and there's there's only three factions. What a, what a pathetic number. That's it, that's all there is in the game? Yeah, the entire game, there's three factions. No, not, not true. Uh, currently, there's three factions. And as you increase your standing, you are given new opportunities. In the case of demonstrational purposes, it is quite literally new rewards. So we've passed this pip, we've become proven with GMB defense, we can complain, we can complain. We can claim that energy core and the railgun. So now when we go back here, you'll see we have this nice fresh new energy core and railgun um, to utilize. You can also see that it's we're still working the kinks out of giving proper level scaling to these applicable aspects. Because obviously getting a level four railgun when you're level eight doesn't feel very good. We know this, don't worry. Still working on it, bringing it together. So yeah. Uh, so let's start, let's let's actually try and do a, 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 um, a lost cargo mission. We'll see if this comes across well or not. I totally forgot to show you guys the uh, the reward system for completing objectives because we actually got 27 diagnostic systems for completing that job, which I then very quickly clicked on and I, you know, but all of a sudden these are now in the inventory. Whenever you take on jobs, it's not just a simple factor of gaining bonus XP and money. You can also gain specific equipment through the job itself. And then you could gain something more through the reputation of doing that job and it just, it stacks. Like there's there's a lot of bonuses to be had there and it is very important to do what I didn't do, which is look at what the reward opportunities are when you select your jobs. Okay, so let's go do another job. Definitely enjoyed just the beta. I look forward to the early access build too. I want more. Yeah, no, seriously. Um, we've been we've been testing a, a lot of new little elements um, for early access. 
specifically for, or, for early access. And some of it's coming along really well. Some of it still got a little bit of tweaking to do, but hey, we got time. I'm glad we've got time. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys do respond to the new content. I mean, we've, we've certainly been hinting at certain things, uh, making a presence and uh, it, the, the value factor, like the, just more content's always a good thing, right? So any game ever, more content, generally a good thing. The cargo has to be somewhere around here. Two outlaw mine lights. Oh, and a detonator drone. Gosh dang it, we flew into a detonator drone. That's going to be the death of me in this game, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Detonator drones and doors. Oh my gosh. We've also um, adjusted, we've tweaked some uh, elements of the AI as well, and like how they're interacting, how they're uh, trying to attack you and whatnot. Too high of levels, goodness. So even like with this outlaw mine layer, they uh, they operate as kind of an, an afar type of enemy. They don't want to get too close to you. When they start, you can actually see this guy's turning away, right? And now he wants to fly away to throw mines at us continually. So he's going to throw a mine here. And we have to be really careful about... Oh man, I missed completely. But we have to be really careful and thoughtful about why they're designed to do what they do and how that's promoting uh, new tools and abilities from you as a player. It's not just a matter of let's let's make a different looking ship and then follow the same generic AI rules, right? Really important that those are different. So this is starting to get into, um, I think this is more of the procedurally generated environment type of stuff where we have to find these lost containers and we have this, oh man, our shields are damaged, yikes. Um, but we have this area to explore, which it could have been kind of like anything. But then we have to find the loot that's somewhere nearby in the area. We'll just fly around the debris. Hopefully we'll find something. I am not finding anything. Oh, 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 I see it. There it is. We got one sealed container, so now we have to find the other one. And while we are searching these areas, we could also go over to this very large asteroid and probably find some resources. I think I see some right there. Uh, maybe some other loot that's scattered about because I see some more debris. So there's a lot that can come out of just doing some standard jobs. And it's not just a matter of doing the same thing over and over and over again, which I'm about to show you because like this lost cargo mission and finding the lost containers, this is probably gonna look pretty different from the next one. Probably. It's my guess. We'll see. There we go. So we got both of those containers. And now we have to take it back to Nefty's plants. Considering the different velocities of the mines and rockets versus non-hit scan primaries minus thermal gun is a lead indicator for secondaries a possibility. I'm unsure that the lead indicator for secondaries is going to be too valuable because the majority, just like in Everspace 1, the majority of secondaries are also tracking. But, um... I think that's a clever thought, though. Maybe we'll see what, um... I can bring that up in a team meeting or something. <laughs> what do you guys think about... Hmm. No, I... I don't know, I kind of like that, but, uh... I mean, especially because... You know, it's like 
when you're using a Gatling gun like this and you're looking at forwards at your target, like that's not the same looking forwards with your, you know, secondaries that you're barraging with rockets. So I can see value in that, but um, it's one of those things we have to see if it's worth bringing in, right? It's all done. Thank you. But I like the thought. It's a good thought. Okay, let's um, let's shop a little bit. We got some things to sell. Nothing too crazy. It doesn't look like. See, we have a new weapon that we can uh, fit on a scatter gun. I am a big fan of the scatter gun. We did use one of those already. Maybe we can find something from somewhere else. We could also take another job on if we wanted to, but um, we are running a little bit low on time for the stream, and I want to do another of the same exact job that's going to be done in a completely different fashion. I really hope. RNG, please. Um, so that you can see there's variety even in doing the same jobs over and over. Oh my gosh, we need to repair our shields. What are we doing? Do not fly out there. Repair this ship. Goodness gravy. Quick repair. Quick restock. All right. Good to go, we don't even have to wait. Isn't that nice and convenient? Yes, yes it is. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. Hey, you know what, you're welcome. You're worth it. Oh. I have to have fun in some ways, okay? Like, you can go mad. <laughs> I also really appreciate you guys' interactions in the streams. You ask a lot of really good questions out there. It's, it's nice. Your observations are rock solid. Okay, so we're going to take another um, one of these lost cargo missions. we just track one of them, fly over to it, and see what it's like. Well, Jaded Cynic, I just now caught your message. You said uh, it's not just being a captain hype here. I've tasted enough from the samples to know it's already a great game. Well, technically it's not a game yet because it's not done. We, we could argue semantics all day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I do appreciate the compliment. I know that our team uh, really appreciates that as well. That's that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're really excited to make a full completed product of a game that's really gonna have the wow factor. Should be good. You're fine, James. <laughs> Miss the text to speech hijinks, says Shiro. Oh my god, Shiro! Welcome to the stream. Shiro, I feel like you're an absolute baller when it comes to the forums, by the way. Like you've been you've been poking around for forever, I feel like, and helping people out. So thank you for that. Your contributions are pretty solid. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate you as a person. Don't stop being you. The lost cargo is in this area. Mm. Is the ARC 9000 going to be in the game? Spoilers! Goodness gracious, people! I can't just give away all our secrets! It's, I mean, let me... I think, I think that the way that it's best to answer this question is there has been a screenshot showing the ARC 9000 already as an ultimate. Wait, hold on, hang on, okay? We've changed the systems that are used in Everspace One to something different. The foundation has been modified. We've gone from a roguelike shooter, right? And to a looter shooter open world experience. These are, there's a transformation here. Yes, shooter is in the title. You're still in a spaceship, go pew pew, check. But just because a spaceship goes pew pew and it does it in a different game, doesn't mean the games are similar. <clears throat> when the foundation changes, the content also needs to be adjusted. So know that we are definitely wanting to honor the elements, the items, the equipment that you saw in Everspace One that you grow to know and to love. And we want to do them justice in the environment that we are cultivating in Everspace Two. Just also note that it might not come back in that same capacity that you remember it as. Things have been adjusted, things have been changed. And it's not because we're trying something new, it's actually because we wanna make sure that it's 
works in a powerful way to give you the best experience possible. In fact, we do that with the very ships that you fly. This interceptor here. This interceptor feels a lot like the interceptor in Everspace One, but it's not the same ship. It's gone through a lot of changes. It's not even a colonial registered military fighter anymore, but rather pieces and parts put together through G and B, maybe colonial pieces, maybe also outlaw pieces, right? You're building something new, but it's still an interceptor. So it has that familiarity. That's what we're doing. And that's how it's all coming together. And I'll also mention that in honoring the lore of a game world, it's important that things that existed beforehand don't just magically disappear and don't have any explanation as to why. There should always be some semblance of connective tissue within the game world. And that's what we are moving forward with. I'm really lucky I found that. Oh my god. So this environment, this is actually, this is a much larger environment to uh, try and find these lost containers. Goodness. But this one is a little bit similar to the last one we just did. Shocks. I was really hoping it'd be more unique, but it's okay. Sometimes within the lost containers, you could get like um, a station that you have to lightly navigate through, for example. And in navigating through that station, you have like a timer and you have to uh, be careful about running into things, for example. Freaking goodness gravy, I'm gonna get some water. Mm. I even saw that coming. That's the sad part. It's like I'm boosting over, it's like, oh, there's an asteroid that I'm about to hit. Goodness gravy. Imagine that if I had my inertial dampeners turned off because that will be a thing. Oh, that would have really hurt. We would have had a pinball effect and I probably would have blown up. That's right, there's a reason why we have space breaks in a looter shooter. I'm telling you guys, it's important. And you will find out when you do have access to the toggle of the inertia dampeners, let me tell you. You're gonna really feel it. <laughs> Cause I sure have. And so there's one more container around here. Thankfully there's no critters or enemies to distract us too much. This little guy is tricky. If we can't find him after a while, since we are getting close to the end of the stream, we'll just uh, we'll just skip this one and maybe do the next one. Because obviously, you get the point. Containers, fly around, find them, pick them up. Found it. Woo! Take it back. We'll actually see if we can. Uh, we'll just move over to the next one as well. And we'll do that en route to dropping it off. Asteroids want hugs too. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Lore continuity is important in the game world. Yes. I feel like that's a standard concept. Am I am I crazy here? <laughs> I feel like that's like a foundational core element. If you are making a game world, if you're making a world, it doesn't even have to be a game. It's like, come on, like let's. There should be some semblance of... Uh, yeah. I'm not trying... I'm staying... Okay, look, I'm trying... I'm stepping down from the soapbox. I'm making sure we're not getting too crazy here, okay? It just... The signal seems to be blocked by some structure. Here we go. So now, all of a sudden, we see a different mission type for Lost Cargo, right? All of a sudden, now... All of a sudden, now... We have to locate this area... This and we gotta blast this open. Now, don't worry about the fact that these are um, moving about out here. Just pretend that they're in here instead. Is carrying the cargo. 
So now this drone is trying to get away and he's got the cargo that we're looking for. So we have to take him on. Oh man, he's he's boosting out there crazy. I'm gonna catch up. Too much trouble for that cargo. That was actually uh, easier than I thought it was gonna be. But um, you can see there that like, even just a lost cargo mission back to back to back, they can vary in the, uh, the mission parameters, right? Maybe you have to beat an enemy, go through a timed gate, uh, X, Y, or Z, just explore. That's what I mean to say with um, how these all come together. All right, so let's fly over here, complete these two missions, increase our standard, our uh, reputation. Got to the end of Everspace 1 with two Arc 9000s. That's it? Hey! <laughs> Expecting a boss battle and then nothing, just a cutscene. Yeah, so um, it depends on like what part of the game space that you were in there. But uh, if you really want to invoke a challenge and you and you really like that sort of in-game progression, I do encourage you, Krizu, uh, Krizu, uh, to check out Hardcore Mode if you haven't. Hardcore Mode is the it's the, it's the real, it's a permadeath, increasing difficulty roguelike feature of Everspace One. Truly. Um, that's probably what I go back to the most whenever I return to Everspace 1, just because, like, it's really unique runs with the handicap features, and you always build up to an end battle. Alright, we're gonna dock at this station. I'm trying to look for any more questions. I, I feel like we haven't seen too many questions, um these last minutes of the stream so okay, if you guys um good. calling nefty's station you are speaking to nefty's station i finished the job good i want my payment signature is fine here you go perfect if you guys do have more questions right now i mean we've got about nine ish minutes left so please this is the time and the space to ask about um what you've seen in everspace 2 um, if you are excited about the early access and you want to ask questions about it, you are able to. Just note that, obviously, it's going to be a little more challenging to go into that space. But if you're curious about the overarching game design or, um, you know, more specific questions about things that have been shown, uh, right now is the optimal time to do so. I want to be in conversation with you. Uh, it's, it's, th this is, this is the space, like, we, words are failing me. Like, I just, I love being able to be here for you guys to answer those burning questions that you have. Like it's it's so important for us to be able to have this moment with you guys so that we can really get this out there so that you can, you know like what we're working on or what we're not working on. We want this transparent means to communicate with you so that you're not in the dark as to what your hard earned money is getting spent on us. But like, like as Kickstarter backers, you've invested in us, we want you to know. And if you've never seen the game before and you want to know what you would be investing your money into, like this is really that space to do so. So you got eight minutes, because I used a minute to explain that. <laughs> so we've got a question that is, how much work would it be to implement a quick repl replay function to the action freeze? Um, that has been on our wish list for quite a while, but it's a bit more complicated and not a high priority at all. That is the official response from Michael. Um, and yes, I can absolutely confirm that. Uh, we would love to have like a, a, a clippable feature where you can like travel back in time a couple seconds and like save that like little moment as like an animated GIF or something. That would be so amazing, but very challenging to do. Is there a device that makes enemies attack each other? Not y uh, no, not currently. <laughs> Maybe there is. I could hint that there is. There's, I didn't say anything. No NDA was crossed. All right. <clears throat> uh, you can play now via the demo. Yes. Uh, yeah, the demo is a very, um, very beginning representation of Everspace 2. I, I, I take the demo with a grain of salt. The controls are going to feel a little bit off. The spaces that you're able to travel in are pretty reduced. You're even going to see a UI change. Like the game has vastly developed from that demo. So take the demo with a grain of salt. Um, and uh, as we move forward, maybe we can 
come up with new plans for people who are just wanting to take a sliver of the game. Thanks for the info. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm glad that uh, the stream's helping you out. That's great. Let's see, from previous streams, I get that the modular design focus prevents asymmetric ship models. Does this also mean that asymmetric liveries are out of scope? Yeah, more more often than not. Um, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I know that the team would love to implement those styles and concepts, um, but with the scale, the scope that we already have for the versatility of ships, like, basically desyncing the wings, for example, and then figuring out what this half of the ship would have to do to compensate for that adjustment. It's almost like we would have to double the number of wings that we would have plugged into the game. Just by taking what's already there and then segmenting them so they're iso like no longer isometric design. Like literally double the amount of work for all of the wings. It, it gets crazy complicated. And so that's why we're ultimately sticking to our plan to make sure that the ships have that symmetrical uh, slick design uh, towards them as a whole. Maybe in the future, like if it's a super crazy popular request for some reason and really people really like that customization aspect, maybe that's something we could visit in the future. But it's not, it's not something that we're really too concerned about. We know that we already have a lot of customization. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are there going to be NPC wingmen for the player? Uh, there are companions that you'll meet along your travels and they will join you in various missions. Uh, we will also talk more about companions in the future, but some of them you've met through the beta or if you haven't been present to watch the streams, you meet a guy who basically helps you get established here in the DMZ. You meet, um, you have a friend that you actually work with who uh, gets put in a cryo hold for the time being. Maybe he'll be important later. Mm. You meet a doctor that you accidentally capture um, <laughs> and various characters like that. Can I get an early access copy? When the early access drops in January, you're more than welcome to purchase into the early access if you would like to play and provide feedback. I do put emphasis on provide feedback. I think that's a very valuable aspect of early access. It's not you getting your first chance to play the game only. It's not you getting a, some sort of pre-order sort of bonus, no. Like, remember, early access is a time for us to come together, you guys as a community and us as the developers, to really bring this to its fullest fruition possible. We want to bear much fruit. That's what that's the goal of early access. So I do encourage you to provide feedback if that is what you want to do. Could friendly critters be an option? I suppose that could be. Okay, I've been answering a lot from YouTube. I'm gonna jump over to Twitch chat now and make sure that we're getting those answers as well. Can you use a support drone? At, in this build, no. Uh, some people have been asking about it. Um, I will say this, in Everspace 1, the big, bad, beefy ship that allowed for multiple drone control was the gunship. That's all the more I will say on that. What's your favorite part about the game? Oh, part, favorite parts? Oh my gosh, there's... That's really hard to answer. Um, especially because I'm I'm not only comparing what's currently in the beta, but also what's in our live builds and what we're exploring and how we're building that out. It's hard to say right now, um, but I've been pleasantly surprised on the modular design for the ship. Like I love customization. I'm, I seriously, it's one of my favorite things. And I could just like look at a ship all day and just like cycle through the options and be like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> like that's, I love that. I love customization. And the fact that it goes deeper into that into meaningful statistical increases and decreases and opportunities and, and effects and all that type of stuff through the itemization itself. Like, yeah. I love that. That's that's one of my biggest things. I really enjoy it. It comes together really well, I think. You miss my piloting achievements? Excellent. Yeah, I feel like my piloting's gotten a little sloppy as a lay. I gotta I gotta practice more. Goodness gravy. I've been so focused on doing missions and stuff and things. Hmm. I should really make sure that my uh my piloting skills are super good. In my defense, I've been playing playing in a slow-moving gunship <laughs> and it's not done yet it doesn't feel right to me oh my gosh anyway let's see what else we, how much time has passed in game from everspace one events to everspace two i like this question a lot so we don't actually have a confirmed answer for this yet even internally because we want to make sure that enough space has passed to provide um the variety to 
the DMZ as a whole from the events of Everspace One, and also to give some functionality to why you as a character have tried to leave after the events of Everspace One, and then you had to find work to build yourself up to then escape ultimately, like like find that perfect format to, to get out. So um, I think in general, it's like a two to six month, maybe, maybe up to a year uh, time frame from Everspace One to Two, but again, we don't have a locked in specific time frame um, at this time. There's already like three sets of wings at times. Heck, that'd be nuts. Yeah, I know, right? Pertaining to isometric designs, it, it gets crazy. <clears throat> In isometric, as, asymmetric, what did I say? Isometric? Asymmetric designs. Um, Michael actually responds and says, because 99% of the time they look off but always create a ton of technical issues. Yeah. Um, not to say that they couldn't look really good, but it's just easier for us to not take the time to implement what could create a lot of problems. Just to complete that uh, that question. One or two unique loot reward ships that are hard hand designed that are asymmetric. Oh my goodness, Janet, you are really pounding that out. You're like, I want it, bring it to me. We get it, we understand, trust me. I love it, I love how you're passionate about it. We can't make decisions like this based on like a couple voices, right? Like. We have to make sure that the overarching elements that we're bringing to the table are rich and meaningful for the community as a whole, right? So trust me when I say we hear you and we love that you know what you want. We also have to figure out what we need. And we're gonna try and bridge that gap as, bridge that gap as best as possible. We just really appreciate your patience and your perseverance and your trust in us to bring this to the best uh, experience it can be. Will there be romances in Everspace 2? What a curious question. I really like that question. Um, so we have said it's an open world RPG and there are female characters. Confirmed? Oh my gosh, did I just say romances? No, I did not say that. Would you all just calm down in Twitch? I know you're doing it. I'm, I am I know who you are. You knock it off right now. I mean, it's, it's possible, right? They're companions that you're finding that you're sharing a game space with. I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's not possible. Um, but I also think that pertaining to like the main overarching story arcs that we've built out and the, the platform of gameplay, it's if we do something like that, I'm really putting a big if here, okay? Like it's not gonna be a big focal point, right? So um, if you're looking for space simulation romance city, this ain't it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I, I, I'm actually past time, but I have a very um, a very kind wife. So I'm gonna keep going with a couple more questions because you guys are doing great right now. I love you. Oh, this is great. Okay, let's see. Um, are the rifts constructed as time limited, I guess, space pockets right now? Are there different mechanics associated with them? I love this question, but it is unfortunately for content that hasn't yet been implemented. I know that we want to make sure that the rifts are valuable. They're meaningful to the player in that in-game content space. So I think what my mentality is, is that we are using other games as reference points, right? Like it's, it's what you do. We play a lot of games. We enjoyed some game elements. Okay, well, that seems like something that would be effective in our design, yes? So I am going to reference straight up Diablo 3 um, and their rift using systems where there, there are certain reward aspects there that we think work really well and some that don't. And those ones that we think do work really well, we want to see if we can bend that in a way that we can utilize more effectively even, or find ways to go through the failures that exist there and make it a good. So there's a lot to deconstruct and to talk about that as a whole but it's not something we can really dissect and get into the specifics of. So timers though, I like your concept there. Let me say that. Uh, let me see. We're gonna do like two more questions. And then I also want to make sure that you guys know that like, I, I wanna like sit here forever and just keep answering questions. Like, I love this. I love you guys, seriously. It's, I, I find such a joy in being able to serve you. If I don't get to your questions, I really strongly encourage you to head over to the Discord, discord.gg slash rockfishgames. Seriously, it's the best place to go, uh, I think, anyway, 
through an Ask Questions channel, you drop in your questions right there, and then uh, either a valuable member from the community will hook you up, um, and you'll get a follow-up from possibly a developer, possibly me, to make sure that you have all of the information to answer that question in its fullest capacity that we can honor. And I do say that we can honor because, of course, we're still heavily in development. There's going to be some things that we simply cannot tell you because we don't want to spoil things for you. So uh, thank you for your patience and your perseverance and asking those questions to bring this all together because it's it's fun like that. Okay. Uh, so a couple more questions and then I'm, I got to bounce. Uh, when will the soundtracks for the game release for us to vibe to? Oh, I like that question. Uh, Giho! Giho, are you watching the stream? Uh, that's that's another, like, I'm not sure sort of response. Um, I have to compare to Everspace 1, right? Everspace 1, we released a deluxe edition, I believe at the same time as the 1.0 release. So you could either buy the game, the base game, or you could get the deluxe edition, which you got the original soundtrack, a digital art book, and uh, some high-res screenshots, if I'm not mistaken. So if we're using that as a, as a grounding point, I would assume that we would probably go in a similar direction with Everspace 2. This is me not being sure, but that's, I can imagine that would be your expectation. So as we move forward in development, if we have more uh, information regarding how the OST will be dropped, if it gets dropped at all, then we will provide that information when it is uh, possible to basically share. So yeah, that's, that's that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Multi Morton says, you're like a friendlier day nine. <laughs> hey, Michael, remember when we met Sean Plot at that convention and I was incredibly embarrassed to talk to him because I'm a huge freaking fan? Oh my gosh, you guys caught me. You caught me. Oh my gosh. No, I, did you know that he's actually from my hometown too? Anyway, <laughs> this is me splurging just a little bit, but I digress. I really appreciate that. He's definitely been an inspiration in my life, that's for sure. Uh, how likely will consoles get HOTAS support? Very, very, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Um, it's, it's, so the reason why I'm taking a moment to think about this is because I had a conversation about why it's effective and why it's not effective for console support. And it has to do with the controllers themselves, um, how they are conjoined to consoles versus the PC, which is far more flexible, okay? Um, but it should be since they cost more, if you think about it. Um, so I don't know what the hard specific response is, and I'm so sorry that I can't provide that in my response. I, I feel bad not being able to like give you the details, but, um, but the long story short is that no, HOTAS, as well as like, if we were to go route of say VR, like it's just consoles is a no. It just, it, and especially like mouse keyboard, no, can't, can't do that on consoles. So if you want that type of uh, iconic support, if you will, if you're a super big into HOTAS, and we know you're out there. I mean, obviously we have a very space simmy like game. We get it. We do have that support coming for Everspace 2 in its fullest uh, for the PC. I'm answering too many questions. I'm surprised my wife hasn't like knocked on my door and be like, bro, get up here, take care of the children. <laughs> well, I gotta keep answering a couple more. Mod support tools, pretty please. Um, so just straight up telling you, mod support sounds awesome. The entire team really likes the concept of mod support, but we are also still making the main core elements of the game to simply have a game exist. So it's low on our list uh, to do, but it is actually a pretty hot priority for us. So if that makes sense, we think that it would be really cool. So I can't confirm and say yes, but we agree. Mod support, that seems really good. Uh, let's see, just like one more, one more then I'm gone. <laughs> No, I think, I think we actually fleshed out pretty well. Oh, I think we're good, okay. So guys, this is actually a really good point for us to uh, put pause 
um, on all the questions. So if you do have any more questions, again, I do encourage you to head over to the Discord, ask in the Ask Questions channel. I would be delighted to respond to you there, as well as many other team members and community members who are also in the know. They will dive in on you. They're just like ravenous with information. It's wonderful, trust me. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been seriously been my pleasure to be here with you guys and just show you the game, show you kind of a look at what we use as developers and how we're testing uh, the enemy experience. Uh, it's it's it gets it gets pretty crazy here with game dev. It really does. Um, so thank you so much for being on this journey with us. And otherwise, I do have to do that awkward transition and say, if you want to keep following along with all the things that we do, be sure to go to the Discord. Be sure to follow us on Twitch and on YouTube. We do stream every single Friday with a couple of exceptions here and there. Um, we've, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, where we show and highlight a lot of your sweet, sweet screenshots from your in-game playing. We love the content that you do, so check that out. And we also have a subreddit that is manned by Hazzy, and he does such a great job of making sure the information there is well kept and organized. So definitely be sure to follow us on all these different sites and sounds to stay in the know. And we'll keep streaming on Fridays to have these uh, interactions with you that are very important to us. And uh, I think that I think that covers it all. So I'm gonna go back to the screen one more time and say, you guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. And I'll catch you in the next stream next week. All right, toodles. to see big meaty reveals don't miss next week <laughs>